What's up guys, it's me, Kidar, and in this video I'll be taking a look at another free print and play board game. So when I was looking for ways to pass the time, I discovered a game called Pocket Civ, which is a free compact print and play board game. Pocket Civ is completely free, it's really easy to assemble, it's very compact, you don't need that many materials, and it's extremely fun to play. But what is this game about? Without further ado, let's jump right in. So Pocket Civ is a free single player print and play board game that requires a special printable deck of cards, an index card, and a pencil. That's it. It's a really lightweight game. And in Pocket Civ, you take role of the ruler of a new civilization. Your goal? Advance your civilization through eight different eras while gaining glory along the way. Glory is like a score system in Pocket Civ, so at the end of each of your playthroughs, you can get a clear-cut way of finding out whether your strategy in playing the game was more optimal than how you played your previous games. Pocket Civ's setup is really, really simple. First, you need to print out the deck of specialized cards. These cards show certain troubles and events that your civilization has to endure. Second, just grab an index card and draw a shape that roughly looks like a fictional country on it. Afterwards, split the country into eight different regions and randomly number them from one to eight. Now, to start on the process of determining what borders our country, we need to mark which side borders the sea and which side borders the frontier. After we establish our borders, we need to start adding forests in mountains in certain regions. So we need five forests and five mountains dispersed throughout the land. Afterward, we mark deserts in regions without forests or mountains, or if there are no regions like that, we put a single desert in a region without a forest. We then create three tribes, represented by tick marks, divided between regions as we choose. And now the game begins. In Pocket Save, the game is split into eight different eras, which represent periods of time that your civilization goes through. Eras are split into rounds, which have different parts to them, which are called phases. In the first phase, your civilization's population grows, and you mark a single tribe in each region where you already have a tribe. In the next phase, you draw a card from the event deck and flip it face up. These events are usually negative events and range from things like devastating sandstorms to epidemics to raiding parties from desert bandits. However, there are the occasional good events in the deck, such as civilizations coming to your country for trading or your own civilization having an intellectual breakthrough. The third phase of the round is the most important. Now it's time to put your tribes to work. Tribes are like your resources, and during this third phase you can sacrifice your tribes to construct cities, build farms, gain certain technological and societal advancements, and build great wonders in your civilization. In this third phase, what you do in it impacts your gameplay significantly. Everything in the third phase is dependent on each other. During this phase, you can sacrifice four tribes in the same region to build a city, and having more cities lets you have more advancements to make your civilization perform certain tasks better or reduce the effects of certain negative events. But to support your cities, you need to build farms, which requires the sacrifice of two tribes and the destruction of a forest in the same region. Everything you do in this phase is so connected with everything else, so a lot of planning is required when playing this game. You can also perform other actions in this phase, like making expeditions on land and sea to gain gold to trade, or constructing wonders to increase your glory. On the fourth and final phase of the turn, some cleanup is performed. All of your gold that you made in your turn is eradicated. Each region can also only host a certain number of tribes, and once the number of tribes in each region exceeds the number of tribes a region can support, tribes are killed off until an equilibrium is reached. This is why building cities is important, because cities increase the number of tribes that can be in a region. So this game requires a very fine balance of having enough tribes to make more tribes in the next turn, but also sacrificing tribes to create cities and farms to support your civilization, and Pocket Civ is very hard in that sense. In Pocket Civ, based on which era you're in, the effects for each of the event cards vary, with more natural disasters happening early on and more civil and political unrest happening in later eras. To move on to the next era, you need to have your deck of event cards run out. Afterward, if the number of cities you have is equal to your current era, you can gain glory for the era by totaling up the number of victory points you get for the advancements and wonders in your civilizations. You then progress to the next era, and the entire game lasts for eight eras, or until all your cities and tribes are destroyed. When I was playing Pocket Civ, I noticed the game was extremely hard. My goals weren't to amass a bunch of glory, but just to survive. 
Every era I advanced in, I was hanging to the skin of my teeth less and less. Pocket Civ is harsh. Keeping up with cities to gain more advancements in the game was really hard, as my farms to support my cities were consistently getting destroyed due to bad event cards. Since farms require forests, I was quickly running out of resources to build farms, and my civilization was going down the drain. However, throughout my playthroughs, I've noticed some strategies that helped me survive a tad bit better. The first was to try to acquire the Agriculture Advancement ASAP. The Agriculture Advancement allows you to construct farms without needing to demolish a forest, and it helped me survive a tad bit more before getting alternately destroyed. That was the main strategy I used, alongside building as many cities as fast as possible to get more tribes and to get more advancements. But seriously, Pocket Civ is really unforgiving, and I didn't fare too well. However, Pocket Civ's difficulty adds to what makes the game so fun to play. Take other single-player or cooperative board games for example. Balancing difficulty and fun is hard in games where players don't compete against each other. Take the game Pandemic for example. I love playing Pandemic and it's a really fun game, but even when using 6 Epidemic cards, which is the highest difficulty in the game, I still found it kind of easy. With Pocket Civ, however, the game is really hard, but not to the point of frustration. The concept of having glory as your score really helps me take a look at what I did wrong during my playthroughs and see what I could do in the future to increase my glory in future playthroughs. And that was Pocket Civ, a free single player print and play board game. Pocket Civ is free, it's single player, it's really easy to assemble, and it doesn't require that many materials to play. All of these aspects of the game make it a great game for passing the time on your board. So, if you're interested in playing Pocket Civ for yourself, a link to its game's website will be in the description down below. If you enjoy my content, please like this video and subscribe for more content, as well as check out my own trading card game, The Gladiator Trading Card Game. A link to its shop page will be in the description down below. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.